In this video we'll be talking about how to pick a perspective. We'll also be taking a look at how I make a top-down character and the steps that I take. And then I'll also show you how I take my rough base and make it into different angles. And as the last thing I'll show you my process and a few tips on how I animate a top-down character. But some of this will apply to any kind of pixel art that you'll make. So let's just get into it and get started. So why do we need to think about the perspective? Well, there are seven reasons. One, the entire backdrop of your game will depend on the perspective. So if we have something like the more front view, uh, the game will almost not be top down and actually more like a side scroller beat em up. Uh, though if we take something like 45 or 67.5 degrees, it'll have more like a Pokemon-esque top-down look to it. So if we take the 90 degree one, then we have like an old school GTA kind of look to it. So first of all, think about the perspective that you want for a game, because it's really going to determine how a lot of things will play out in the long term. So every time I make a character that I know I'll have to animate, I usually take this three-step approach. So what is this three-step approach? Well, first I make this like silhouette of the character and then I color out each limb like you can see I've done here. My second step is to refine some of the details in there. If I use an outline, I'll put the outline in there, get the shape and lines in there that I know that needs to be there. That does not mean the clothing, just the body parts of the character. And after that, my last step is to take that um, base that I've made with the colored limbs and then shade it up and actually make it to a clean base. The reason I don't give my bases clothing on right away is that I wanna make sure that the body part is where they're supposed to be. You can always dress it up later. It's gonna make it so much easier for you in the long run. So when you make an RPG game, it's important that your character can look and walk in every direction. And I want to show you my approach to giving all the angles uh, into a base as well. So you just have a clean character that you can work out from and you will make everything in the long run so much more convenient. So like when I make the first step of the base, I actually take the entire rotation animation and make it with these like silhouetted shape first, because if that looks nice, you're almost guaranteed that it's going to look nice, very detailed. This is a good way to check if things actually work out and fit well together. Imagine if you made all the finished frame first and you figure out like the arm is a little off and you have to edit that a little bit and then you realize oh it's maybe the back is a little off or the head is a little off and you keep think moving things around so this is a way of you to make sure that everything just works right away all right so when i have to take a character from the standard pose and detail it up instead of drawing the entire pose i take one thing at a time so you can see i started out doing the eyes for all the angles then now i'm working on the head for all the angles and you can see over on the right side i have a constant playing preview where it spins 360 degree so i can constantly see if everything flows and look nice so it's important that you take one body part or one feature at the time. So like I said, start out with something simple like the face, then move down and take the body or something like that and then build your way out. Don't draw the entire frame uh, completely detailed. Take one thing on every frame at the time. That's a very, very good way to make sure that everything flows and you just have this nice way of checking it while you're working on it. So I'm now somewhat happy with the uh, form of my 360 degree sprite here. I'm going to uh, detail it and finish it up here in a bit, but I wanna give a tip um, because you can see my character here is a nine direction sprite. And if you're less experienced, this is maybe going to be a little bit difficult. So if you are less experienced and new to this, I would actually recommend you only making a four direction sprite. It can still move in nine direction. The more angles you make, the more sprites you have to make. Think if you make nine direction like here, I would have to animate a running cycle in nine direction and I would have to like dress it up in nine direction. So to make things a little less difficult for yourself, if you are less experienced, just work with up, down, left and right. But if you wanna take the challenge, go nine direction. <laughs> All right, let me detail this up and let's make it pretty. 
So like before, it's important that you take one step at a time. In my case here, I first put out the base color, then I shaded the neck, and then I started shading the arms. Just take one thing at a time so I can always, on my right side, preview, making sure that it looks nice and pretty as I'm making it. This is just a really crucial way to make sure that you don't get those pixel that jumps a little bit around when you see the animation play out. That's something that annoys me, so this is a good way to avoid that. All right, so this is the 360 uh, standing pose. Now I'm gonna show you how I approach animating a sprite like this. And after that, I'll talk a little bit about the reference you can use to make your sprite animation look a lot better. Who would have thought I take the exact same approach when I animate, yes. So when I animate a sprite as well, I try to do it this way as well. So I make the, the silhouetted shape first, make sure that those flow very well. I clean it up again, make sure that everything still flows very well, and then I clean it even more up and make a final base. And when I have my final base, I can start putting things on that base. And I want to say one thing about putting clothing on your character is that um, like when I when I clean up the sprite, you saw how I shaded first the neck and then I started shading the arm and then the other arm. Take one thing at a time. So first put on like a shirt, make sure that the shirt looks nice. Then if the character has a hat or hair, put that on, make sure that that works nice. So you take one thing at a time and always keep track of that everything flows very well. Let's talk a little bit about reference when you're going to animate a characters because I could sit here and show you my approach of animating a character but to be honest for the most part I'm just following a reference so I want to show you a few places that you can find cool reference that you can work out from that I've been using in the past and I still sometimes use. So I use this website called Sprite Resources quite a lot. It's basically a website that's archiving sprites from everything from old to new games. Any sprite based game basically. You may not be able to find every game in here but you can find a big chunk of good stuff so for example when i look up animation reference i just search up something that i know looks cool for example i really like kirby games that's a huge inspiration for me so for example i can go up search kirby and then i get a preview of all the sprites that has something with kirby in them here and uh, let's just take this um backdrop Kirby sprite and you can see here I can see all the animations for this sprite I want to say one thing don't rip off the sprite don't download it and just copy things out just look at it use it as a reference because when you use a reference you teach your brain how to do these things if you just copy it you won't learn anything and when you want to stop using reference you can't really do anything um, so I would recommend just have them on the side, like open it up in a window or do something where you can look at it and say, oh, this animation have like this amount of frames. I can see that he's kind of like bouncing up a little bit, going down, you know, use it as a reference because when you study something, you learn it so much more than just by like copy pasting things. And then of course, our good old friend Google, you can always search up like animation reference. Um, so there's a bunch of ways that you can find reference online. So I really recommend go out there, do a little bit of research because it's gonna teach you so much by self-studying a little bit as well. Shameless self-promotion time. All right, so you can check out my merch store if you wanna get a cool looking pixel t-shirt. Currently I'm wearing the Mine monster shit. Nice. I really like it. I hope you do too. Or you can check out my asset store where I sell sprite sheets, color palettes. Some of it is even for free in there. It's a great way to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you like what you saw, make sure to give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. You can also help me help you by supporting on Patreon or be a Twitch subscriber. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you for playing. Continued.